Fox News alert, more now of my interview with the Department of Justice attorney turned whistleblower. J. Christian Adams, who resigned just weeks ago from the Department of Justice, is speaking out, saying the decision by the department to drop a voter intimidation case, which had been won, drop it even though it had been won, against members of the new Black Panther Party, was based on political and racial reasons. He also claims that there is now a policy at the Department of Justice, a mandate that's been issued, that no voter intimidation cases will be brought against any black defendant where the victim is white. The Justice Department denying his claims, saying that he is a conservative and has an agenda. And that is not all. Part two now of an interview you have to see. We were ordered not to comply with the subpoenas. I mean, this gets back to uh, the question of transparency. I mean, there are attorneys at the department who know the truth about this case, but they have been ordered not to talk about it. And, and I'm just in the position where I've given up a great gig at the department, top of the federal pay scale, enjoying myself, just got promoted. But, you know, they can't talk about the truth. Only I can. Because you have since resigned from the Department of Justice. That's correct. Two weeks ago or three weeks ago is my last day after being ordered not to comply with a lawful subpoena, after hearing the lies that are being said about the case, uh, after the corruption that we witnessed in the case, I just said, that's it, I resign, and uh, now I'm no longer there. And, and, and before, I want to get to the circumstances of your resignation. Sure. Because what happened was this guy Perez, Tom Perez, had to go in and uh, testify before the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights. He went. That's right. right. You, you weren't allowed to go, but he went. That's correct. And he told them the facts and the law weren't there. Uh, we took a hard look at it. We reviewed all the evidence, all of which you say is not true. Uh, and before he gave that testimony, you sat down within the Department of Justice and issued a warning. Did you not? The attorneys on the case, I mean, we've been hearing this facts and law, uh, ethical obligations argument from the department since the case was dismissed. And we know that they're false. And for Tom Perez to go under oath to tell the same story to the Civil Rights Commission, um, we wanted to make perfectly clear that he knew before he did that about the potential of his inaccurate testimony. And we told him that, but he still testified. Did this guy lie under oath? Well, I, I, I'm not a perjury expert. I, I know about the truth, but I don't know perjury. And, and I know what the truth is, and I know that to say that the facts and law don't support the Black Panther case is not true. So you sat him down before he gave that sworn testimony before the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights and you warned him uh, that the testimony you understood he was about to give was go not going to be truthful. We made it very clear that continuing to say that the facts in the law don't support this case would not be consistent with the truth. What was his response? He testified. What did he say to you when you issued that warning? Uh, I don't want to talk about that here but he, he, he obviously testified and stuck to his story. And was there any follow-up by you? I mean, after you learned that he went in before the commission and gave that sworn testimony, what did you do? I resigned later that afternoon. That day? Yeah. You were that upset? Of course. I mean, the, the reputation of the, these are the best attorneys who worked on this case. People who have been doing voting law before the people who dismissed it were in high school. And we knew the law, we knew the facts, and you can only take so much. And you can't see the Constitution and the law suffer from lies like this. Do you think that now you're a target? Well, you know, I, I can't answer that. I'll, I'll, it, this, I can't answer that. I don't know. I mean, I gave up a great gig at the department. I, 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 like I said, it was at the top of the federal pay scale, bringing great cases, enjoyed it, uh, and gave up that job. Are you a disgruntled employee? Gosh, no. I got, I got outstanding reviews, promoted uh, many times, loved it. I love this area of the law. Tom Perez, in, in his testimony before the Commission on Civil Rights, came out and said, look, reasonable people can differ. And this boiled down to a disagreement between the trial lawyers <clears throat> and these other lawyers, Rosenbaum mm -hmm. and King. And this is what he said, quote, two people with 60 years of experience made the judgment that the evidence didn't sustain the case. He went on to say they looked at the entire totality of the circumstances. They reviewed all the evidence that they had before them, and it was the product of, I think, very careful consideration. That's false. Reasonable people cannot differ that when men stand in front of polls with weapons and prevent people from getting in to vote, that there's any difference of opinion on that. That is sacred in America. The polling place is sacred. That's what separates this country and makes it exceptional from other countries in the world and other countries in history. 
for someone to say something like that who is an elected, appointed official in this administration should give you chills. Perez also testified about whether laws at the Department of Justice are enforced in a race-neutral manner, which is their mandate. He was asked by Commissioner Gaziano, do you agree that the voting rights laws should always be enforced in a race-neutral manner? Answer, yes, sir. Question, it would be a problem then if any political appointee or supervising attorney expressed the view that the voting rights laws should never be enforced against blacks or other racial minorities. Answer, that is not our practice, Perez says. We look at the facts and the law. Well, if he's, if he's had discussions with all of his people in his shop, he'll know that that's false. Uh, there is a hostility in the voting section and in the Civil Rights Division to bringing cases on behalf of white victims for the benefit of national racial minorities. That's a fact that was on open display in the department. And I write about this as my Pajamas Media piece at pajamasmedia.com. It's, it's perfectly clear to anybody who's been in the department that there's this hostility. They're hiding behind this shield of people really knowing the truth, and there's no doubt about it. Is the Department of Justice corrupt? Well, I think the decision to dismiss this case was corrupt. I don't think the department or the fine people who work there are corrupt. But in this particular instance, to, to abandon law-abiding citizens and abet wrongdoers constitutes corruption. You also wrote about this case and you referred to, quote, lies that have been told. What lies are you referring to? Well, there's been a number of them. I mean, just the, the spin that's coming from the department now is a lie. But look at some of the other lies about this case. They told Congress, for example, that Jerry Jackson, the tall Black Panther, lived in the apartment building. Therefore, he could be there. Well, it turns out that's not the truth. And they had to backpedal. Then they said that only Rosenbaum and King did the dismissal. And then Washington Times finds out, well, the associate was involved. And then... This guy, Tom Pirelli. Correct. The number three at Department of Justice, who, according to the Washington Times, was responsible for this decision. Correct. And then it gets worse. In written interrogatory paper responses to the Civil Rights Commission, it was also revealed that the Attorney General was also briefed on the case. Eric Holder. That's correct. So the initial statements of the department are being proved in hindsight to be false. How high did this thing go? I can't answer that. We were, we were just doing our job. We, we didn't even know these things. Uh, we thought we had a good case. We thought it's all going to be over with soon. We're going to win. And then it wasn't. Would it be extraordinary for a decision like this to be made in a case this big without being run by the Attorney General himself? Well, there was testimony to the Civil Rights Commission from a former Justice Department official that that was true, that that's the case. That it would be extraordinary? It, it, unheard of. So you believe the Attorney General likely signed off on this? I, I just know what, was, what Mr. Katz has testified to. It, it, you think this case and the, and the policies that were in place at the Department of Justice, where you worked for five and a half years, you think that, the, that they raise questions about the upcoming midterm elections, about the upcoming presidential election? There's no question about it. I mean, I, I saw firsthand the laws we enforce, the laws we should enforce, and the laws we won't enforce. And I know without any question about it, not just me, other people are aware of this too. What should happen here, Christian? Well, the department should refile the case tomorrow. They can refile the case. Bob Popper and Spencer Fisher, the attorneys who are still there, who know the facts and the law, should be allowed to refile this case tomorrow. They will win it. They might be a little embarrassed, but it will be a good thing for the country. Separate and apart from the new Black Panthers case, what should happen? I mean, if that is the attitude within the Department of Justice, according to you, that they, they're just not going to enforce voting rights cases if the defendant is black and the victim is white, I mean, how, how can that be addressed? Well, I, I mean, Congress maybe can exercise some oversight, if not this Congress, the next one, and peel back the truth and sh let the public see what's really happening. Do you, you know, you spoke earlier of, of Perez, Tom Perez's testimony to Congress, and he went before the House and testified, as I said, that this would be a Rule 11 ethical violation for them to have brought this case, yeah. that that was the basis for them withdrawing the case. Is that testimony truthful? Look, the attorneys who brought this case brought an ethical case. They brought a solid case. They're, they're the best in the business. For them to say that, that there was more experience in the attorneys who killed the case is another falsehood. Nobody had more experience in these issues than we did. The, the attorneys who killed the case hadn't done a voting case in 15 years. You know, this is extraordinary. I, I practiced law for nine years, and I've been in the news business a while. I've never seen a former Department of Justice attorney come out and speak like you're speaking. Uh, is, this, is this 
nerve-wracking for you? Are you concerned at all? I, I would much rather still be at my great gig at the department, making us at the top of the federal pay scale, got promotions, enjoyed it. It was great. I didn't go to something new, but this was important. Well, is this a political thing, though? I mean, do you deny that you're a conservative, that, that you're somebody who's supported Republican candidates in the past? I've supported Republican and Democratic candidates. I've given money to both. I'm an American who believes in the Constitution and the law, and there's only so much one can take if you believe in those two things. You could be their worst nightmare. I hope not. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not like that. I, I just, the truth is the truth.